Hey guys, welcome to my channel. This is Justin here, and we're going through the free code camp algorithms today. We are under the coding interview prep section under the algorithm, the first section within that section. And last time we met here, we did the bubble sort. And today we're going to be doing another type of sort, which is the selection sort. By the way, guys, if it's your first time here today, uh, I make these type of coding videos, these algorithm videos, uh, React tutorial videos, anything related to coding, you'll find it here. So if you like my content, please click like and subscribe below so you'll get more coding goodness just like this one. And uh, for the subscribers who's returning, and if you're wondering where my other non-algorithm videos are, so for the next few days, I'm just going to release us, uh, all of these sorting algorithm videos. Uh, because I had to get my computer service actually, so I had to get these out real quick. So I don't have much time to make new videos, but new videos will come once I get my computer back. Uh, but today, let's check out the selection sort. Let me read this for us real quick. Here we will implement a selection sort. Selection sort works by selecting the minimum value in a list and swapping it with the first value in the list. It then starts at the second position, selects the smallest value in the remaining list, swaps it with the second element. It continues iterating to the list and swapping elements until it reaches the end of the list. Now the list is sorted. Selection sort has a quadratic time complexity in all cases. Okay, so hopefully you guys understood what's going on here. Let me just bring this code over to my editor. Let's zoom in real quick. Okay, so pretty much what we have to do is we have to go through the whole list, find the minimum value, and then swap that with the first item in the list. In this example, it happens that the first element is the minimum value. Okay, so we lock that in place, and then Ignoring the first element for our second iteration, we go through our value again, our, our array again, get the most minimum, which is this one now, and then we swap it with our sec with our first index element or the second element in the array. We swap them and then we keep on going like that. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, for this one, we need a for loop within a for loop. So let's do this. I'm gonna ignore these change code comments here. And by the way, guys, if you guys haven't tried this out yet, please pause the video now, try it out, and then come back to this video to see how I solve it. Okay, so if you're watching, I'm assuming that you are have already tried solving this. If not, you've already solved it. So I'm gonna do a traditional for loop for let i equal zero i is less than how so my first iteration is a whole series of finding the smallest element so how many times do we have to find the smallest element and i would argue it will be the length of the array minus one because the, for our second last one once we swap that one with our final one then everything's already in order right so we don't have to go all the way to array that length all we gotta go is array that length minus one we only have to do n minus one swaps. If there's an n length of an array, we only have to swap n minus one time. Hopefully that made sense. So that is our outer for loop and my inner for loop, I will use the j variable. Let j is equal to, uh, do I want to start at zero? For the, uh, let me explain what the inner for loop does. The inner for loop, once we are have selected which one we're going to look for, uh, with our i, then with our j, we look for the most minimum uh, element within the array. Uh, so if it was our second iteration, the first one's already locked in place. So we within here, we find the minimum element, right? So it doesn't make sense for j to always start at zero because uh, after the first iteration, uh, first, some of our numbers will be locked in place, right? So we only have to check from, let's see, from i. So if it was a first iteration, we will start from j equals one. We will start looking from this element here and onwards because the first one is already locked in place. So for j, we do have to go to the end of the array because we gotta make sure that maybe this one is the next smallest one, right? The very last one. And then j plus plus. And then what do we have to do? We have to find the minimum element in our current iteration. So in the beginning, I'm gonna assume that the first element of our iteration is the smallest one. So I'm gonna say let min, and I'm gonna 
All I'm interested in right now is the index of the smallest element because I'm going to swap it later on. So let's say min index is equal to i. We're going to assume that. And as we go through our loop, oh, by the way, because we are already assuming that the first iteration, the i, which j starts at, is the min index, we could actually start from j plus i plus 1 for j. So we're going to say if array at min, uh, actually, sorry, but array at j is smaller than array at min index, then we're going to swap. Actually, not swap. We're going to make the current iteration of j the min index, a new min index. So we're going to say min index is equal to j now. And we got to continue on with this loop. If we find another smaller one, then make that the smallest index. So after we are done with this for loop, we can assume, safely assume, that we have the smallest index. The, uh, the element, the index in which the element is the smallest, right? So we will say, now we have to swap. Now we have to swap with the current iteration, which is i. We got to swap i with min index. So the typical way we do that is introduce a temp variable, right? So const temp is, let's just say that's array at i. And then we're going to swap it with our min index. So we will say array at i is going to be array, whoops. These are, should all be, or the full word array is going to be array at min index. And likewise, array at min index is going to be temp. So now we have swapped uh, with this example here. Let me just show you guys what's going on. We go through the list. This one is the minimum. So he he's just swapping with himself. And then once i becomes one in our second iteration, with our j starting at i, uh, currently the min index is four, and then j starts from this one, and then we constantly update the min index until we find this guy who is the min index, and then we swap him with this four right here. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna constantly swap until that is all done. So I think we are done. I think we could cancel out the result of this and see that we will have a sorted array. Let's see if that is true. So I run the code, and looking at my terminal right now, it does seem sorted. Let's see if Free Code Camp is happy with this solution. I'm gonna bring this over here, run the test, and we pass. Okay, so now let's think about some ways that we could refactor this code. So one thing we can do is, you see these three lines of code where we're actually swapping? There's actually a much more convenient way to do this without introducing a temp variable. The way that we do that is we just make two arrays like so, and we put the sections that we want to swap. So array at i and array at min index. Those are the ones that we want to swap, right? And then we just flip it around on the right side. Array at min index, comma, array at i. So this will essentially replace these three lines of code here, making it a little bit more clean in my opinion. And Another, let's just make sure that that still works. I run the code, there we go. Okay, so another thing that we could do is, the problem with our function right now, our quote unquote problem, is that it's not a pure function. It actually mutates the array that you give it. We're mutating the array parameter in place right now. So what do I mean by that is, let's say we had a variable called r, and I'm just going to make this old big old thing, the array variable. And then I'm going to call the selection sort on our array variable. Okay. And if I run the code, that still gives us the sorted variable. The output of this is the sorted. Let me just make that more uh, explicit. Const output is going to equal the selection sort. Okay. So if we console log the output, we get a sorted array like so. But now, if we also console log the original array, if you look, they look identical. That has also been sorted. Meaning, this function that we made, it actually mutates the array that we pass it in. So that is not 
uh, one of the criteria of a function being a pure function is that it shouldn't mutate any parameters that you give it. So while this was not a mandatory requirement of this question, I personally like making my functions a pure function. So what I am going to do is in the very beginning, I'm going to make a copy of our array. And there's a simple way to do that. You just do array.slice. That will make a shallow copy of every element in this array. And henceforth, after this line, instead of using the array, let me just grab every single one, being very careful. I'm going to replace it with our R variable here, like so. And that way, and make sure you grab every single one. And that way, if I console log the output and the array again, if I run the code, you'll see that while the new one has, uh, while the output of uh, variable has been sorted, the original array is still in its original form. So I personally like this better. This is not a requirement, by the way, but I just like it better. Let me just put some, yeah, that's that looks pretty good. And let me grab this code, make sure that free code capsule likes it. Paste it in here, run the test, and we pass. Okay, guys, so that was the selection sort of free code camp. And the next time we meet, we're gonna be doing the insertion sort. So I'll probably release that the day after this video comes out. So please stay tuned. Again, guys, if you like my content, please click like and subscribe below. You will find these type of videos along with many other coding videos on almost a daily basis. So please stay tuned and happy coding and have a good day.